Familiarize yourself with the Nexstar remote by reviewing the owner's manual. The face of the remote contains the joysticks, switches, and LCD. The handle contains the trigger, a tether connection, and holding magnet. The back side has the battery case. The red e-stop switch is in the upper left corner. The link on-off power switch is in the upper right. Crane movement is controlled with the joysticks and trigger. The truck engine can be remotely started and stopped using the start-stop switch in the lower right corner. An auxiliary and high idle function is just above the horn push button. Ensure that the e-stop is in the raised or deactivated position by pulling out on the red switch. Then move the link on-off switch to the link position and release to the on position. The remote scans for any active switches, joysticks, and trigger during the self-diagnostics. If a switch, joystick, or trigger is engaged during startup, the LCD screen will display the activated function before automatically powering off. In that case, release the activated function and perform another power-up sequence. When the remote has been powered on, the LCD screen will illuminate and perform an initialization. When a switch, joystick, or the trigger hasn't been pressed for 30 seconds, the LCD backlight times out to save battery power while the remote remains active. Pressing any function on the remote reactivates the LCD backlight. After 15 minutes, the remote will automatically power down to save battery power. The remote can be turned off by pressing the on-off link switch down to the off position. Note that depressing the e-stop switch will also power down the remote as well as de-energize whatever functions are connected to the receiver e-stop output. When the e-stop switch is depressed, the crane receiver e-stop output is immediately turned off and the remote additionally powers down. Reference the installation information to determine what machine functions may be connected to your crane's e-stop output. Note that the e-stop is intended for emergency stopping only and is not intended for normal power down of the crane unless configured in that manner. The top line of the LCD screen displays capacity as a percentage. The second line shows any active errors to help the operator quickly determine the status of the crane. The third line displays the boom angle to help determine the lift capacity of the crane. The next two lines show the remote mode and speed range settings. The bottom line shows the wireless signal strength, battery percentage, and watchdog indicator. The watchdog indicator is in the lower right corner of the screen and shows that the remote is active when the dot sweeps back and forth. The wireless signal strength is shown in the bottom left corner of the screen and shows the receiver's signal strength. The remaining battery life is shown on the bottom center of the screen as a percentage remaining inside the battery symbol. Operators can expect around 100 hours of operation on a fresh set of four disposable AA alkaline batteries. When the battery power reaches 10%, replace the batteries. Remove the battery case by loosening the four thumb screws on the back of the remote. Secure the battery case by finger tightening the four thumb screws. The remote will remain water resistant when the battery case is in place. 
The engine start and stop switch allows the operator to remotely control the engine and save fuel by turning the truck off when not in use, as well as reduce heat in the hydraulic system when the truck is set up with a smaller cooling capacity. The engine remains latched on if the remote times out after 15 minutes. The auxiliary switch turns on or turns off the output by moving the switch up and releasing it back to the center position. The auxiliary output is most often wired to run an air compressor on trucks. Even when the auxiliary output is switched off, compressors may continue to run due to the cycle that needs to run. The auxiliary output remains latched on should the remote time out after 15 minutes and turn off. The yellow horn button is required in some states and by OSHA on certain job sites. Pressing the horn button creates an audible sound as well as activating a red LED light on the crane. The magnet on the base of the remote allows you to place the remote in a convenient location, keeping the remote handy while you work. Don't forget your remote at the job site or sitting on the truck bumper. An optional cradle for the remote gives a friendly reminder chime should you try to leave the remote at the job site. An optional tether cable can be connected between the remote and the base of the crane to provide both power and canvas communication with the receiver. During tethered operation, the wireless communication is automatically disabled. Remove the cover on the remote handle and align the groove of the plug and receptacle. Then, screw the connector together until snug. Do the same for the crane end of the cable. During startup sequence, the remote will automatically recognize the tether cable connection and disable wireless communication. A wired connection symbol is displayed when the remote is tethered to the crane. Return the remote to wireless mode by simply removing the tether cable and restarting the remote. 